Hola! I just wanted to go over Sagittarius with you guys. I know it started over the weekend and that's fun. I hope everybody enjoyed their first few days of Sagittarius season. Um, We're coming out of the Scorpio season where our love was focused on one person and it was passionate and it was crazy and it was uh, intense and all these things and now we're going from that intense focal love and we're spreading it and now it's time for universal love greetings thank you for joining um as we know sagittarius started sagittarius season started on the 22nd and it goes up until the winter solstice on december 21st um this is the season of the end of harvest and this is you know we're getting ready to start winter during the capricorn season um sagittarians enjoy freedom they're very straightforward they can be seen as opportunists and patient and sometimes um sometimes they can promise more than they can deliver which is you know the theme of this season when you're dealing with thanksgiving you're th dealing with christmas and you know a lot of people have like these grandiose ideas and these grandiose promises they're making to one another and to themselves um you know as we you know go into capricorn season um and plenty of times we're not going to deliver on a lot of those but anyway moving forward um they are open-minded free thinkers and the travelers of the signs and during this time people and animals travel for the winter you see the birds traveling and other animals traveling you um, you see certain animals preparing themselves and getting their things together for hibernation I, for one, can't wait to come back as a bear. A bitch wants to hibernate. I like to be in the house when it's dark at 3 o'clock in the evening. This is ridiculous. Um, and Sagittarians are usually considered extroverted, due, more so due to their curiosity. Um, it might be taken as a type of opportunist type thing. You might see like Sagittarians always only coming around where, when something catches their interest and some people misinterpret it as this person's an opportunist, this person, you know, take advantage of people and blah, 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 but that's not their intentions. It is like a, a innocent curiosity. Um, during the season, we go from the structured love that was directed to specific people, like I said before, during Scorpio season, and going towards the vibe of universal love. Um, we may feel more extroverted during the season. It's also time to reflect on all we have learned and celebrate. Um, what I would do is, if I were you, I would, I would look up my natal chart and just look up what planets you have in, under Sagittarius because those are the planets that are going to be more amplified during this time. Um, those will be the things that you want to focus on during this time. Do I have anything in Sagittarius? I don't believe that I do. So, um, so definitely, you know, look that up about yourself. If you need guidance or whatever, feel free to inbox me. Um, we can, you know, walk through that together. Um, Sagittarius is symbolized by the centaur, um, which is loving and seeks to create change. Um, during this time, we'll feel an energy shift. Uh, we also trust the arrow as in, you know, the symbol for Sagittarius. It is a centaur holding an arrow. And where it will land is where it's supposed to land. And this gives us a relaxing vibe. Um, during this time, we kind of let go of responsibilities and things like that. Um, this season is ruled by Jupiter, which is the planet of luck, expansion, and amplification. So, um, another key when you're looking at your natal chart, look up where Jupiter is. Um, and look up, you know, where Jupiter is and versus where Jupiter is now. And that kind of gives you an idea on what to focus on in terms of how to elevate yourself um how to expand whatever it is that you have going on thank you so much for the love i appreciate it um faith positive energy prosperity um jupiter also governs travel and long distance um as well as affairs big business wealth religion law higher education um jupiter is all about structure law and authority um not necessarily power because power is with pluto but um just just that authoritative role and the laws and the regulations that come with it that's all jupiter 
Um, Jupiter in your chart helps you uncover your level of responsibility and the level of therapy one needs for that expansion and elevation that we spoke about earlier. Um, it's house placement determines circumstances best for holistic health, um, where you will seek opportunity, confidence, growth, and fulfillment. Um, also, Jupiter is associated with your liver and blood circulation. Um, the metal that's associated with Jupiter is tin. Um, and the colors of Jupiter you know associated with jupiter is indigo blue and a royal purple so you know if you want to you know go further into the relation of that the the indigo blue is your is your crown chakra you're dealing with your crown chakra um you're dealing with your intuition um religion kind of kind of goes hand in hand it's like your moral compass if you will um that's what we're focusing on during this time um and and it also goes on, I did some research on this, um, Jupiter focuses on age 35 to 42 because during this, you know, bracket, you know, in your life, this time interval in your life is when you do start to focus on, you know, your religion, your moral compass, you re you revisit that, you, you know, you start to go inward and, and look at the authoritative role in your life and in, in your life decisions. Um, yeah, so that's what's happening. Thursday is associated with Jupiter and Sagittarius. Um, crystals to wear on Thursdays, amethyst, lepid lepidolite, star, and the star anise, um, spice, and chalcedony. Um, Sagittarian is a fire sign. Um, fire signs usually have strong basic instincts, quick to temper, but also quick to cool down. Um, they're very much interactive into physical activity and sporty. Um, which is kind of odd because during the season, all I want to do is lay down. Um, the tarot card associated with this season is the Wheel of Fortune. Um, like I talked about the symbol, the centaur holding the arrow, arrow and knowing where the arrow and having faith that the arrow knows where the arrow is supposed to go. And it's a relaxing feeling and it's a strong trust into the arrow where it's going to go. So the fact that the Wheel of Fortune tarot card is associated with this, um, it makes sense. Because it could either be one of both ways. You could either, you know, trust that the arrow is out of your control. Or you could be the kind of person that is holding on entirely too tight to that bow and arrow. Trying to control where the arrow goes. And, um, and keeping it, you know, being honest and realistic. If you think about all the other elements that control where that arrow is going to go. The wind, where, the, where other physical elements are in the space. Um, how much space there is, etc. The lighting, etc. Like it's so many different um, other elements that have absolutely nothing to do with you and your control that are going to affect where that arrow goes. So that's definitely something to reflect on. Um, random thought. Um, Arumila is the it also named Arula is the Yoruba Grand Peace Priest. The embodiment of knowledge and wisdom, the custodian of the Ifa Oracle. Um, this this priest is associated with the ukulele, the rosary, or mala. Colors associated with this um, priest is yellow and green. Also associated with wood, cedar, and um, it's kind of like an advisement to use a cedar tray when worshiping or invoking this um this individual and you usually do this when you're trying to uh seek some level of knowledge and wisdom um or some level of expansion so anything associated with what jupiter is ruling your moral compass the you know laws of religion of your life and your walk and your journey you this is the um the yoruba priest to, to invoke um, I can't talk. <laughs> Sagittarius season is in the ninth house. Um, this refers to law, judgment, religious matters, education, immigration, and justice of a country. Um, still staying in that same theme of things. It's also associated with the number nine. That's my favorite number. It's four nines in my birthday. Um, which is associated with order, action, forgiveness, compassion, inspiration, spirituality, and divine love. Um, when dealing with like the the tree of life in terms of manifestation the ninth level of manifestation you're gathering the physical elements and the forces and you're coordinating it into the forces of the other eight manifestations to give rise to physical things so all the other you know elements of all the other 
eight stages or circles in the tree of life you're combining them all together once you get to this ninth stage and you're creating a new physical form um so this is basically alignment again we're dealing with you know putting something together the, nut, the nuts and bolts um which is what religion and our moral compass is for a lot of us um this is also a referral to the divine womb because again we're putting together different elements to make this new thing um people with nine energy work with without motive and want greater good for all um these are protecting this is a protective and loving energy um a universal phenomenon a strong intuition and uses communication to influence people um referring to the text metu netter uh, during the season you want to pray facing northwest from no november 5th to december 21st from between 9 p.m and midnight and all set is you know the invocation uh, body is cool during this time and it's beginning to re-moisten ability to respond emotionally to ideas is heightened you go into mediumistic trance renew your commitment to identifying your true self sweets will enhance this ability unless you impress your will onto your life uh unless you press impress your will into your life force you will suffer lack of willpower as issues associated with it. I want to read that again because I don't like the way I read it the first time. <clears throat> Unless you impress your will onto your life force, you will suffer lack of willpower and issues associated with it. Once you impress your will on your life force, it is time to go to sleep and allow Kafir to do the rest. So... Again, this is about going inward and finding your moral compass and, you know, what you're doing within your journey and so on and so forth. Um, so that's the theme for this time. With as far as crystals go, um, associated with Sagittarius season, we have Amethyst, Appetite, Aventurine, um, Sapphire, Copper, um, so Lapis, Moonstone, Obsidian. Um, a lot of these stones are spiritual protection stones, smoke, smoky quartz. Um, a lot of these stones are, are towards intuition. Um, yeah, a lot of these stones are about intuition, about going inward. Like you have that piece up here and that's, you know, to find like a certain type of, um, equilibrium within and peace. And amethyst is an intuition stone. So, yeah, we're definitely focusing on going inward during this season. We're definitely trying to get our moral compass correct. And it makes sense because towards the end of December, now you're, you know, you're hanging out with your family. You've been donating. You've been um, feeding feeding the hungry. You've been donating cans. You've been going to uh, soup, soup houses and, you know, volunteering your time. Like, we're all doing that during this season. We already innately given that universal love under the Sagittarius sun where it's called for. And, um, you know, as we get to the end of the year and we, you know, we go towards the new year, we do tend to naturally go inward and start thinking about our new year's resolutions. Well, what am I doing? What have I done? Um, what's working for me? What's not working for me? What do I want to see different this time around next year? Or a lot of us start to think about the summer and the spring where the actual, like, new beginning season does occur, um, so yeah, these are a lot of things that we still already innately do without thinking too hard on, which is, you know, pretty interesting. It kind of like validates all of this for me because, you know, it's the holidays that we're celebrating and it's already, you know, interconnected with, you know, the, the planets without us even trying. So Sagittarius season, Sagittarius sign is a mutable sign. And it means that um, mutable signs are adaptable. They go with the flow. I'm a Virgo. I'm a mutable sign. Um, from November 19th to the 21st, Jupiter aligns with the galactic center, meaning like it goes like across the Milky Way um, and then moves into Capricorn season. And this hasn't happened in over 12 years. So that's pretty cool. Um, on November 23rd, Venus joins Jupiter in the center of the Milky Way. So you're, you know, we're going to have a straight line going across on the 23rd. Um, November 20, 
you know, back to November 24th, Mars is in Scorpio opposing your Uranus and Taurus. Um, begin feeling this three to four days prior. So around the 20th, you'll start to feel like uh, Mars is the planet of motivation. Um, Uranus is kind of the planet of rebellion. Um, reaching that point of, you know, the end of your rope. Now you're about to like switch up real quick. And Taurus is love and passion and beauty um, and emotion. So those three together, you may feel like a very volcanic type of energy. Um, you may also feel heated or easily irritated during that season, um, during that time when those three planets are, you know, aligned in that matter. So definitely um, be on the lookout for that. Be careful for that. Be mindful of, you know, how social you are during that season and what social interactions you have. Like be, be mindful not to be around people that irritate you by default. Um, and this already passed, so we probably already did this. What was I doing on the 24th? That was Thursday. I had a parent-teacher conference. That was interesting. I mean, yeah. yeah. That was pretty... Yeah. That wasn't a bad day, the 24th. The people downstairs had a bad day on the 24th. People was getting their door kicked in. I live on top of crazy people. They be doing stuff every night. Yeah. 24th was it probably was not just it was probably like little things that irritated me but anyway um pluto is moving closer to saturn and that's pretty cool because pluto is the planet of secrets and power and authority and saturn is the planet of organization and all that so we may see a new a new organization coming to the forefront we may see some secrets come up and to become reorganized when the closer that Pluto gets to Saturn, that's going to be pretty interesting. And isn't that already, like, really happening? Like, we have all these movements happening, all this, you know, activism happening. A lot of people are, you know, denouncing different toxicities in their family and generational curses and stuff. So, like, it is something that, you know, we're already innately doing without even knowing what's going on in the cosmos. That's so beautiful. It's so cool. Anyway, moving forward. So, getting into, like, where the planets are going to be during this time. A lot of planets are still in the same space. As you know, that our larger planets on the outside kind of take them a few decades to get to, you know, a full circle. But the sun is, of course, in Sagittarius. The sun is the controller, um, the central station. Um, Sagittarius, you're dealing with reason, gener generosity, cheerfulness um law justice authority so during this time you find yourself being ruled by um by the need to go by your moral compass during this time and we are because you know we may not give all year round but this year but this time around this year we feel, we feel the need to go to church we feel the need to visit our elders and that respect that we innately have for our elders automatically comes out we feel the need to um you know go to homeless shelters we feel the need to donate so you know you feel that that pull within you telling you you know hey you know go this way go that way trust the arrow trust where the arrow is telling you to go don't don't fight it guys um the moon is your inner self and we know that the moon is always moving all over the place so ladies we are still going to be all over the place this this season too the, um but anyway the full moon will rise at 4 37 p.m on december 11th um this is where we harvest our intentions and our wishes which we innately do because we're preparing ourselves for the new years and the resolutions that will come with us and some of us kind of be like well i'm gonna start a few weeks early on my resolution i'm just gonna come in the year with it so you know that's what's happening on december 11th um at 6 24 a.m the full moon will set um this full moon will be a gemini moon um it deals with versatility flexibility and wittiness so um be mindful of your words during this season hey thanks for watching thanks for tuning in everybody um the new moon it will be rising on 6 44 a.m yesterday it rose and it was in Scorpio and now it's in Sagittarius.
um and this moon deals with new beginnings um creating a clean slate we're setting our goals for the month i would definitely have a few goals that i'm setting for the month and i feel really excited about the month of december because i do feel like i am going to start setting my intentions around the full moon on the 11th and keep the ball rolling um the new moon will set at 5 11 p.m and this moon deals with discipline tenderness and dedication so you know we're disciplining ourselves we're getting ready to you know wrap the wrap the year up um mercury during this time we know that mercury rules your decision making mind and how you communicate mercury was in retrograde from november 1st to november 20th and then it went direct november 20th it will be direct all of december so we do not have any mercury mercury retrograde happening whatsoever during the month of december we're we're good <laughs> um Scorpio season is where Mercury started from October 3rd and it will be going in Mer in Scorpio season up until December 9th. Um, during this time, you have felt a need to uncover truths. You may have been a little bit more witty with your vocabulary. I know I definitely have. I have been getting tons of writing done. Tons of, yeah, I've been getting tons of writing done. I've been doing music. Um, I think I've been writing other people's papers and getting like, super dope feedback on like my my word choices and stuff like that so like it's definitely been a good time to do that um during this time you may have also felt perceptive inventive and just straight to the point yeah no because that's so. um and then once december 9th comes mercury will be rolling into capricorn season and the mind will be focused on the necessity the necessities of life um you may find yourself starting to only want to have conversation with some level of purpose and that produces some level of results i feel that already i think i felt that and i think i felt that in scorpio season like i stopped wanting to have the mindless conversations during libra season i was being very libra and virgo season i was being very extroverted and i was just going out and just la 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 having conversation with any and everybody but i think as the year comes to the close i am starting to like shut off other people not on a on a negative or a malicious sense like i'll be back y'all but like i just don't feel the need to have those kind of conversations right now um um venus which rules love and finances on november 1st it was a sagittarius season so you know the love which it's been generation and universal we've been loving the world um starting yesterday on the 26th venus entered capricorn season i mean venus entered capricorn um venus in capricorn is you may find your love and your kind of it's definitely a good time to focus on your finances which is happening you know we start get we start playing around with our taxes soon so we're starting to get those things together um but you may feel like a little bit more like structure you're starting to put things into perspective you're starting to um just be a little bit more structured with your things. You may find your love being a little bit more rigid, though. Be mindfulness. Be mindful of your shortness with your love. Be mindful. Um, make sure you're not going too inward. You might. Hmm. I needed to hear that. <laughs> Telling myself, I just got done saying like, yeah, I've been cutting niggas off. I see you later. But then I'm like, be mindful of that. Don't do that too much. All right, I'm not gonna do that too much. Hey guys, don't do that too much. Um. So yeah, that's what's happening with Venus. So you definitely during the time, work on your finances, work on your frugality. Mars, which rules our animal instincts, our energy, action, and sexual desires. Um, November of 19th, it was in Scorpio. Um, so we felt like a passion, power, may have felt very passionate, very sexual during that time. Um, an obsessive intensity um turning into your innermost self getting getting stuff done um mars and scorpio season you may have been motivated to reveal old truths and kind of unravel some of the tangles and different threads you may have with other people or with yourself or with different aspects of things um 
And that's still going on. Mars is still in Scorpio until further notice. Jupiter. Oh, yeah. And then we talked about Mer uh, Mars aligning with a couple of Mars in Scorpio, but opposing Uranus and Taurus. And then, yeah. So, yeah. Jupiter, which is the planet of generosity, tolerance, wisdom, law, religion, tradition, order, business. Um, Jupiter is in Sagittarius season and during this time we're fl reflecting on these traits we're reflecting on our um, our moral compass and we have been doing it we have been breaking generational curses we have been re removing toxicity from our family and trying not to pass it on to our children we're you know learning about our history but in a positive sense instead of always learning about the times that we were conquered um, we're just doing big things right now with our with our inner compasses and we're starting to cr connect our compasses with other people's we're becoming inter interconnected interdependent beings again and embracing it this time so that's pretty cool that's what we're doing on our own um a oh, forewarning that during this time try not to be too hard on yourself or too harsh on yourself um whatever it is that you're trying to get done the whatever it is you're trying to change it's going to it's going to happen don't when you're reflecting on these things and you're changing your moral concept compass it's not time to beat yourself up on what you have been doing it's not time to beat yourself up on the times you fell it's time to focus on what it is you're supposed to be doing now be present um don't dwell too much on the fuck up that have occurred it's okay we're all doing it we've all done it um saturn Saturn rules fears, our limitations, and responsibility. Um, Saturn is in Capricorn. Um, we may feel, you know, very ambitious during this time, which is evident. We have a lot of business owners coming out. I've even seen statuses this week of someone making statuses about not in, not wanting to work anymore and um, asking people for, you know, self-help. To build their own business like we're we are getting on that we are getting to that place where you know we are becoming ambitious we're starting to work together we're starting to build our own stuff we're trying to get a black wall street back up we're you know we're doing all these things we have all these internet platforms where we're all coming together and investing in this internet platform to have our stuff sold together like it's really cool um hold on one second yellow across the room like so yeah with Saturn and Capricorn um we may feel ourselves getting into the space of the need for self-control again a lot of us are like yeah I want to work for myself um a lot of us are taking control of our lives a lot of us are making different decisions on what we're doing um all that fun stuff Uranus it rules over individual individuality progressiveness uh fresh starts intuition and uranus is in taurus and during this time uranus and taurus are kind of like two different like it's like um magnets um they're repelling each other because they're like two different points of view uranus deals with starting over and being fresh while tar taurus season is like it's an earth sign so it's stubborn and it's holding on and it's you know and I believe Taurus is actually a fixed earth sign at that. So it's like double. Oh, oh not in me. Oh, I have a lot of Tauruses in my, in my life. But so with them being together during this time, it's time to let go of those things that you've been really stubborn on. Uranus is not going to let you keep holding on to those those things, those habits, those relationships, um, that job those those belongings that the, the universe ain't going to let you hold on to that for too much longer uranus is in taurus right now and that that energy is is going to make you let loose on some things that you've been holding on to and being stubborn about um and this is going on until april 25th 2016 so and and it's happening like look at like what we're doing now with our social structure with our economic structure with our um with our healthcare structure like 
is is happening like look at what we're doing we're letting go of a lot of things that we have just been like oh we're not letting go of and even as individuals we're letting go of certain mind frames that we held on to since we were children we're you know i see a lot of people talking about childhood trauma and just letting go of it and learning what healing is i'm still in the process of my life where i don't even know what the fuck healing is like i don't know at what point do you say all right i'm healed because i'm human and it is sometimes where you know a thought might ignite an emotion in me immediately or you know i i i look at us as algorithms you know i use that analogy sometimes amongst others but i use that a lot sometimes and i'm like you know when something happens to you it's an experience it's an experience and your mind creates a memory map or an algorithm to hold on to that so whenever something remotely close happens again that looks like that experience you're going to react the same way now i see some people interpret that as not being healed like you're still treating people like they're that one instance you're still you know behaving like that one instance now if you're healed i mean like you know i don't know but i don't know that's that's another conversation in a therapist couch you know on a different day we'll do that let's do that let's do like therapy hours on i don't know whatever anyway so neptune neptune deals with your subconsciousness your dreams your psychic sensitivity inspiration um neptune was in retrograde from november 21st till today neptune stopped retrograde today um and excuse me so from today until December 1st, Neptune is in Pisces. Um, during this time, illusions are created to open your psychic moments and your dreams of the future. Uh, oh, illusions are created for pleasure. And you become open to psychic moments and dreams of the future. So that's what's happening. Um, Pluto is still in... Pluto is in Capricorn. And Pluto deals with rebirth, new beginnings, growth, power, obsession, and secrets. And with it in Capricorn, um, misuses and disorganizations of power come to light for reconstruction. Which, again, is happening. It's happening. Um, these are things that we're already innately doing without thinking. Um, and we're excited about it. We're already doing it. So, I mean, it's, it's cool because, like, what I try to do is I don't look at my... I have a few different apps, like the Pattern app, um, Astro Matrix, that I really love because it's really good with your natal chart and um, correlating the where the planets are now to how the planets were in your when you were born, and it, it's just really dope. But um, and then I have the Daily Horoscope app, but I don't look at them every day. I don't look at them every new season. I look at them every now and then, and I reflect. I'm like, oh my god, that did happen on that. Just how like I'm sitting here doing this video and I'm realizing what today's date is. Like I haven't been writing the date at work all day. I in correlation to like my notes that I wrote. I um it's just like, you know, that's how I do it. Like every few days or so I'll look at it and be like, oh my god, like I did have that kind of day. Wow, that's so crazy. So it's just like in this moment right now, just thinking about not just me as an individual, but us on a large interdependent scale, like all of these things that, you know, it's happening above, like we're already doing below and we're not even thinking about it. Like, I'm pretty sure a large group of people don't even believe in like the planets and things like that, but they know around Christmas time, they're in the, we call it the Christmas spirit. They're giving, you know, they're loving all that fun stuff. That's pretty cool. But Okay. So that's what's happening. Um, the mantra during this time, you want to do it in direction of southeast. And this is the spiritual direction for guidance. Or if you want to, you know, cite your mantras west, that's performing meditations and rituals for mundane. Um, mistaking, during this time, be mindful of mistaking information and education for knowledge. Um, this will lead to bad judgments. A false sense of knowledge and unfounded optimism so that whole like promising more than we can deliver let's try not to do that during this time um this time is associated with tahuti the second sphere the planet jupiter third day the colors blue and white associated with the throat chakra and innocence um the number eight which is the number of um law completion and bringing things to a physical uh sense labeling um 
the stone of this time is yellow sapphire and lapis lazuli uh the oil to use during this time as well as the incense is lotus as well as sweet almond and you want to take a bath with thia t-h-i-y-a during this time and that is in reference to the Metunetter Volume 1 book by Rod Winifer. So, yeah, that's what's happening. So, I just wanted to show you guys some of my jewelry that's associated with this season. Um, like I said, the stones are... I have Aventurian jewelry. I also have Obsidian. I'm just going to show you guys a couple pieces. I do have a website i do have an instagram page i do have an inbox i do have a facebook page it's less nobody's collection less nobody's collection dot me and um so you guys can look at the rest of my inventory i'm not going to do the whole thing now i have some driving that i have to do i hate driving and then holiday driving at that hopefully it's not too bad hopefully everybody is already where they need to be so i can just get to where i gotta go i hate driving in new jersey why did i move back here i must be so but anyway so this is the season of love and universal love so i do have some rose quartz items i have this necklace it's, it has a pretty long chain it's a long black chain but yeah and that's an organite and organites are a complete 50 50 um combination of organic and non-organic material the organic material is the resin because the resin is carbon and the inorganic material are the crystals now what happens is the organic material which is the resin it is attracting the ions the negative ions in the air and the inorganic material the stones are, is repelling the ions in the air and by it being attracting and repelling simultaneously it creates a scrubbing motion to the ions thus making them come out as positive ions um so it's good to have in your space it's good to have in your face all that fun stuff um this is tiger's eye obsidian and garnet this is on a gold necklace um I have a moss agate and citron, not citron, carnelian necklace. It's wire. And this is a little shorter, but I also have green aventurian, which is a stone of the season, and obsidian, which is also another stone of the season. And this is a nice size pyramid. And then I did like a cool, like, um, I did this by accident, but I actually like how it came out like bumpy um i'm just gonna show a couple more things and then i'm going to be done feel free to inbox me if you want information on your birth chart or how to correlate the planets to the birth chart or if you want to learn about the apps that i utilize with my birth chart um it's wooden beads and green aventurine as well as moss agate this is African turquoise, hematite, and green aventurine with be, um, wooden beads. This is onyx, and I had or I made these organite beads on here also, and they have garnet, amethyst, and obsidian inside of them. So all the big gold ones, I made those beads. Um, I made these beads as well. So anybody who has a business where they do beading, if you guys are interested in having organite beads and you want to make, you know, your own jewelry, I definitely do make items that you can make your own, you know, your own stuff with, you know. But this is Green Aventurian and Rose Quartz. This is a perfect bracelet for right now. And this is Green Aventurian and Gold Hematite. I really like this one. It's green and gold. I think that's so dope. But yeah, I made these. I made these. I'm really proud of these. It's fun. Um, I have rings also. This is this is garnet and rose quartz with gold flakes. This is amethyst. It's Africa shape ring. It's all amethyst in it. This is not an organite. This is simply a green aventurian stone, but I still like it nonetheless. Um, and this is mixed. This is citron, black obsidian, and garnet. It's Africa shape ring. And I make a lot of pins. I wear my pins all the time, but that's what it looks like. I wear them on my sweaters and my cardigans and stuff like that. 
And I have a few. I'm just going to show a couple. And then you guys could just go on my Facebook or whatever. Or my Instagram. Um, my Instagram is at Sunshine Monet. M-O-N-I-E. It's pronounced Monet. That's my middle name. This is a pin. And this is also a pin. I also have this amethyst pyramid. It's just all amethyst. And I have my sticker to show you what's in it. It's amethyst and uh, obsidian. And this is just dyed highlight. It's different things. So yeah, that's what I have. That's what's happening in Sagittarius season. That's what all the planets are doing. So if you're going inward and you're correcting your moral compass and you're starting to set goals and intentions and you're giving yourself a clean slate and you realize that you are the centaur and you're the one holding the bow and arrow and you just need to loosen up that bow and trust that that arrow is going to go where it's going to go and not everything is in your control and there's so many elements in the world that's controlling what that arrow is, not just you. Just, <sighs> You are not in control of everything. No matter what you do, something else is going to happen because there's a million and one things happening simultaneously that's affecting where that arrow is going. Just do what you can. And that's all. I love you guys. I hope you guys have a really cool Sagittarius season. I know mine is going in a great direction. I definitely have like a lot of goals and a lot of great things going on and coming up. Um, my kids' book is out. Um, please, please, please go online, order it, like it, share it. When you do receive it, review it, comment on the website. It's called Show and Tell. It's about a group of kids that go in front of the classroom and they talk about where they're from in a rhyming fashion. I did a lot, a lot of research on the on the uh, different places that I, you know, researched and put into the book. Um, I, I touched different places worldwide. And a lot of the stories and the historical stories of the Aboriginal people and Indigenous people that had in certain lands, like I looked up like Nauru and Peru and um Ghana Nigeria um I looked up so many different places and then you know the history of, of a lot of indigenous people during the time of colonial yeah colonialism whatever I don't know <laughs> but during that time it was just it's just like really sad it's really sad where a lot of people are at today because of that um but anyway moving forward on a positive note great things coming for me great things coming for you great things coming for us as a nation as we continue to keep growing and changing our moral compass and learning to love one each other one another and reconnecting not just with each other but also with the earth it's really awesome it's really beautiful keep it going guys